Hi, I'm Andy. I'm from 365 Racing, and I'm here just to show you a little bit about our 5-speed Drenth sequential transmission. Uh, before I begin, I'm going to show you a little bit on just the difference between a sequential transmission, um, a dog box transmission, and a sync road base transmission. Um, now, you're, now, most cars come with a sync road base transmission, and the way a sync road works, um, which is the main thing that that separates uh, a, um, a synchro transmission from a dog box is this is a synchroed gear, straight cut synchroed gear. Here's my synchro, there's the gear. And when you put your car into whatever gear you're going into, you're putting pressure on the synchro ring, which is putting frictional force on this gear, slowing this gear down until the slider engages in this engagement ring of gears. This side of the gear is what transfers it to the output shaft or the, the counter shaft um, and then that sends it to the wheels. So this is basically what's slowing the, the uh, gear down um, and sometimes this takes time and this is where a dog box transmission can be quicker. Uh, instead of there being friction to slow the gear down it's a little more violent. Um, dog engagement, as you can kind of see here, has these couple little um, steps or dog gears and they have a slight taper on them. So, <clears throat> as you can probably imagine, slow shifting this type of engagement could cause damage. So these are spinning very fast and as the dogs come down, it'll catch. And if you go slow, sometimes you could damage those teeth. Uh, and this is why any sort of, of dog engagement transmission needs to be shipped fairly quickly. They have to slam down, and then that taper, if you can kind of see it there, um, is actually going to hold that um, slider into gear. So there's, um, it, it's quite difficult to pull that out of gear when on power. Um, and this is why you need to reduce power on a sequential transmission to do flat foot shifting there needs to be an ECU or, or something there that can control the power cut and I'll get into that a little bit later but that's the big thing that separates the synchroed uh, engagement to dog uh, engagement now a sequential transmission versus a dog box they operate fairly the same they will have the same type of engagement as you see here but a sequential um, hence the name being sequence. So each gear happens in sequence. So you can't accidentally miss a gear and go into, you know, the old money shift from third down to, you know, instead of going to fourth, you accidentally go to second. You can't do that with a sequential. Um, so the engagement type is the same from a dog box to sequential. Uh, a dog box is typically going to be H pattern. So the same as your normal sync road stock car production based transmission. Uh, so you'll still have an H pattern, and I'll show you. I'll show you here the H pattern shifter mechanism. You'll have all the shift forks. Um, you know, this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse, and then you know you'll have your. This is the uh, selector. You know, you, one will go up, and the next gear's down, up, then down. So that's that's your H pattern. Uh, but a sequential uses this barrel system here. It uh, looks like little uh, worm paths and that will actually determine the path that these sliders go. So here we have first gear, then second, third, fourth, fifth, and then reverse. Uh, so the way a sequential works, reverse is actually there's, there's a neutral position which is what I'm in now and reverse is back um, and then the other direction will be first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So everything has to happen in sequence here. Um, and it uses this barrel system. And in here there's a... Um, I'll, I'll show a picture. Uh, maybe in... I'll try to edit this video and put a picture up. But there's a little spring and a mechanism that, that only lets it click once. Um, it's hard to do with holding a phone here. But it, you, you push it in once and it will lock that into place. And then... Um, here, maybe it's better if I just show you. <laughs> Okay, so we are in neutral, 
So if I want to go to reverse, and one thing with dog uh, engagement gears is if they're if they line up just right, or I should say just wrong. Like here we have reverse. If you can see that, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's pick a different gear here. So if you if we line up these sliders just right, so the dogs are next to each other. When that gear goes down, it's not going to go into gear. It's going to hit that dog and not go into gear. So one thing with a dog box or a sequential, the shafts have to be kind of spinning, and as you're putting pressure on that uh, on that slider, then it will pop into gear. But if it lines up, if this shaft stops and it lines up just like that, it's not going in gear. So um, that's where what you would have to do is just let the clutch back out, get the shaft spinning again, and then um, push the clutch back in quick and then throw it in gear. So... Uh, so what was, was I showing reverse is to line up the dog gear that <clears throat> that's reverse so get, <clears throat> engage the top shift fork so we'll go back to neutral and now we can go first one motion one click there second and this is one motion will take it from second or, or I'm sorry, from first all the way into second. So it's just bam, second. And I'm gonna line up the dog gears. And then again, one motion will go third. <laughs> third. And again, one motion to fourth. And one motion to fifth. And that's it, won't let you go any higher. So down is just in, 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 in. Down to first, one more, we're in neutral. So I'll show you a little bit what controls this. This is our, I guess I'm not 100% familiar with the real accurate terms, but this rod goes in and there's a little uh, gear actuated system in there which is turning the uh, barrel. So you can kind of see I'm pushing in and out. And on the other side of the case, this is what will actually sit in that rod so all it is, is all, all the uh, this lever does is up up down 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 up up so the driver controls this through this cable right here which gets hooked up to this lever right here one uh, interesting um, or the one main benefit of a sequential is the quick shifts you can do uh, because of a few things. For one, the dog engagement allows you to do quick shifts, but uh, this transmission can do um, a full computerized no lift shift, no clutch, just simply grab the next gear. And the way that works is on this shift rail there is a string gauge on there that will sense when the driver is pulling back on the shifter. And that will tell this little ECU in here, it's a little computer, that the driver is wanting to shift up and it will cut power through ignition. There's a, a, a wire here we'll hook up to our ignition which will actually cut ignition and it will hold the ignition or, or kick out the ignition until it has a barrel sensor here. Um, and that will go on the outside of the, the back of this case right there. But that will tell that ECU when it's in the next gear. And as soon as it's in the next gear, it will actually kick the ignition back in. So it's a closed loop system. Uh, unlike some uh, sequential controlled transmissions, they will maybe cut power just for a specific time. Uh, and, and that has to be kind of tuned in, and, and it's, it's not always accurate. Um, so you might have to... You don't want the transmission to kick power back in when it's not in gear because you could cause serious trans um, problems to the transmission. You could eat up these dog dog teeth. Uh, so it's, it's very important that the transmission is back in gear before the power comes back on. And that's where this system really makes it kind of foolproof for the driver is it will not kick that power back in until it knows it's in the next gear. So it also makes it quicker too because as soon as it's in the next gear, it will give power at the, the soonest possible point instead of being on a time... Uh, a set amount of time and maybe the transmission was already in gear for a uh, 20 milliseconds before it actually gave power so this will give power back immediately 
Um, other than that, um, as far as assembly, this came all separate, so we assembled all the gears on both shafts. Uh, this keeps all the, the the gears actually on one shaft. Typically, on a, on a normal stock trans, you'll have you know the the engagement gears would be first, second here, third, fourth on the input shaft, fifth reverse would be on the output. This keeps it all on one. You do have to do some measuring. We had to measure um, the free play. Now, on a stock trans, you'll actually add preload typically because they're a helical type gear. Uh, so it'll use taper bearings and you'll actually add preload on the shafts but being a straight cut you actually don't want any preload you want free play if anything so we got that set up we already measured got our shims on here um, we still need we've got a different uh, final drive we're still waiting for the differential we need to use a stock differential uh, that will go here comes with different bearings that that again the stock differential runs a taper bearing now that this is a full straight cut final drive gear, it can run just roller bearings. Uh, this is Drent's custom case half, uh, built a little stronger. Uh, difference again from a um, straight cut gear to a helical gear is helical gears put a lot of thrust load where it's actually put, pushing, the shafts will push away. This one will push up and the other one will push down. So they'll push away from each other. Uh, where this will put more axial load. They'll actually, the gears will actually push apart. So we have a lot of force coming this way and this this shaft's pushing it this way so that's the need really for a stronger case versus the OEM case. OEM case isn't designed for that type of load. Uh, there is a breather system on here. The typical um, stock trans uses the final drive to access a pu uh, oil pump so we'll pump oil around here, shove it in here and then there'll be oil coming out through here coming in down through the shafts. Uh, not needed on a sequential. Uh, I think typically that's used for a lot of synchros to supply oil in through the shafts and out through the gears. Don't need it on this. So this uh, is just acting as more of a baffle and then there's a breather hose that gets hooked up right here going to a catch can. Yeah, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, got my instruction book. Read that several times. Got a brand new OEM case half. Uh, it's kind of important to start with that because they say over time, if, if you're, you're starting with a used one, um, these bearings, uh, the, the seats can actually oval out, so you have to bore them out and run an oversized bearing. So we're running a brand new OEM case half. Um, they're actually not that expensive. They're only about 400 bucks, I think, for a brand new one. So yeah, that is about it. Hopefully we'll get this in the car here in a few days and... Um, yeah, see how it goes. Alright, thanks for watching.